In the last couple of videos, we've talked about the universal statement. Which says, for all x in our domain, our quantifier is true. But now we're going to look at something a little bit more complex. This is a universal conditional statement. Remember, a conditional statement is an if-then. Right? Or P implies Q. So we're going to be combining the universal statement with the conditional statement to get the universal conditional statement. Okay, so this is what it looks like. We say for all x, if p of x is true, right, so we read this as for all x, if p of x is true, then q of x is true. And it doesn't look like it, but it might very well be the most important type of math statement in mathematics. So some common examples that may sound familiar. For all x in the real numbers, if x is greater than 1, then x squared is greater than x. Now, in algebra, you might learn something like this, or some kind of rule like this, and usually the domain is implied. rather than explicitly written out. But it's usually there, right? If we're saying some mathematical rule, it usually applies to certain types of values. Um, here's another example. For all shapes, S. If S is a square, then S has four equally length sides. All right, so this is the definition of a square. And again, the domain is often implicit if we're talking about squares, and that means we're talking about shapes. Um, but we can be explicit about it if we want, and if we're explicit, we're going to see that it's a universal statement in both these cases, and often when you come across these rules. And so this universal conditional statement is everywhere in math. It's just often implied rather than written. So we talked about negations of universal statements and existential statements, let's talk about a negation of a universal conditional statement. Well, what we saw before was that that negation sign went through and it switched that sign, or that instead of a universal, it would make it existential, or vice versa. So this is going to become a there exists an x such that and then it also flipped that part of the equation, right, or of the uh, statement. So do you remember, if we have an implication, P implies Q, the negation of it, we did this in a previous module, was going to be P and not Q. And again, you can do a little truth table to remind yourself of the fact. But we did that before, so I'm not going to do it now. So to take the negation of this part, I'm going to say P of X is true and Q of X is not. So this is the negation of a universal conditional statement, and we will use this a lot when we get to proofs. This is um, finding the negation 
of a universal conditional statement becomes extremely important later on. So I really want you to remember this or write it down, make a note somewhere, get comfortable with it. Okay, so let's do an example. If a person is blonde, then they have blue eyes. All right. This is a universal conditional statement. We are implying a domain um, all people. So we have a domain. It is a universal domain. We're saying something about all people. So this is a universal conditional statement. Is it true? No, it's not true. Blonde hair and blue eyes are often found together, but not always. Certainly not required. So since this is a statement, that means it's either true or false. We said it was false, which means the negation is the opposite. So in this example, the negation will be true. So let's take a look. So the negation is true, and let's remember that the negation of a universal conditional statement is equivalent to the existential statement right there. Okay, so I'm going to first write this symbolically. going to pull that negation in and I'm going to say there exists a person P such that and now I negate the next part of it. Now this is an if then. Right? This is a if P is blonde then P has blue eyes. So we can call these P and Q if you want. And the first part stays the same right up here P of X stays the same and then we take the negation does not have blue eyes so don't get confused when I'm using this this red P and Q is different than the P in our problem. So there are two different P's going on here. So to rewrite this in English, some people are blonde and do not have blue eyes like this person. Let's do another example. So if a real number is greater than 2, then its square is greater than 4. And I can write this formally as for all the real numbers x, if x is greater than 2, then x squared is greater than 4. Right, I'm just parsing this English. And now let's take a look at this. This is a universal statement, which means it not only has a negation, it also has a contrapositive, a converse, and an inverse. And we're going to figure them out right now. 
So the negation, well, we know what the negation is. The negation of a universal conditional statement. Again, I'm going to write this up here. The negation of that is going to be there exists an x such that p of x is true and q of x is false. So in this case, here's our p of x, here's our q of x, so our negation is going to be there exists an x in the real numbers such that x is greater than 2 and x squared. Now we want to do the opposite of greater than, and that's going to be less than or equal to 4. Right? We can do the contrapositive. If you recall, if P implies Q is our statement, the contrapositive is not Q implies not P. So this, we keep the for all here. But I'm going to say that X squared being less than or equal to 4, right, I'm taking the opposite of this one implies the opposite of this first one. And we know that the contrapositive is equivalent to the original statement, so if this original statement is true, which indeed it is, then we know our contrapositive is true. Clean this up a little. Okay, now let's look at our converse. If you recall, the converse is P implies, excuse me, Q implies P. That's the converse. So here we've got the converse. Now let's look at the second part. It implies the first part. Now, is that always true? No. Think about when x is negative 5. Well, that works. x squared is greater, so that would be 25 is greater than 4 implies that x is 5 is greater than 2. Um, let's do negative 5. Right? Negative 5 squared is going to be 25, which is greater than 4, but negative 5 is not greater than 2. Okay. And now, finally, let's do the inverse. So again, the inverse in simple Boolean algebra is not P implies not Q. So we do the same thing here. Prolix in the real numbers. The negation of P is X is less than or equal to 2 implies the negation of Q, which is X squared is less than or equal to 4. So once again, uh, this is false because if x is negative 5, negative 5 is indeed less than or equal to 2, and negative 5 squared is not less than or equal to 4. Okay. So parsing these out and being able to put a table like this together is a very useful thing to do. Remember I told you that these were going to come in useful. So let's make a little table here. We have that P implies Q is our simple Boolean algebra in predicate calculus. Um, we can create for all X, P of X implies Q of X. And again, um, P of X is a predicate, Q of X is a predicate. And with our universal statement part at the beginning, this becomes 
a statement. The negation was P and not Q for our simple Boolean algebra. In fact, let's just go down here and do our simple Boolean algebra. We've got the contrapositive is not Q implies not P. The converse is Q implies P. And the inverse is not P implies not Q. Now remember the negation is the only one of these that changes sign. So it becomes there exists an X such that P of X is true and Q of X is false. The contrapositive, we go back to for all, for all X, negative Q of X implies negative P of X. We have the converse for all X, Q of X implies P of X. And then our inverse for all X, negative P of X implies negative Q of X. So this neg negation is the only one with a there exists symbol, and it's also the only one without an implication. So if you ever take the negation of a conditional statement, you should not get another conditional statement. Okay, and then finally, we know that the contrapositive is equivalent to the statement. The negation is, in fact, the opposite of the statement, so it's not equal to the statement. Um, the converse is occasionally equal to the statement, but not equivalent to. But it is equivalent to the inverse. And the inverse, again, is not equivalent to the statement, but it is equivalent to the converse. I've also given you a PDF of this form in uh, all typed up, so it'll be easier to read.